Audio is half of video. It's really important. And if you're looking to improve the overall audio quality of your videos, then it's probably time to think about adding an external dedicated microphone to your camera setup. So in this video, I'm going to compare two super popular microphones from Rode, their least expensive offering, or one of their least expensive ones, the Video Micro, against one of their most expensive video microphones, the Video Mic Pro Plus. And just for comparison, I'm now using the built-in microphone on the Canon EOS R. And built-in microphones on cameras have gotten a lot better, and they can actually be pretty decent if you're pretty close to the camera. But a dedicated external microphone really makes a difference. So I'm gonna be switching between these two microphones as I talk throughout this video, and I'll be sure to put whichever one I'm using on screen. But just for reference, the bigger one is the VideoMic Pro Plus, and the smaller round microphone is the Video Micro. I've personally been using the VideoMic Pro Plus for about the last year and a half, and I really like it. It has a ton of options, it delivers outstanding audio quality, it has a battery that lasts forever. It's a really good microphone. The only downside I found to it is that the microphone itself costs about $300, and then to add on this windscreen was another $40. Lately, I've noticed a huge rise in popularity of the Rode Video Micro, which is an awesome, compact little microphone that also has an awesome, compact little price. It usually retails for about $60. And for that price, you get the microphone itself, which is attached to a shock mount. You get the 3.5 millimeter audio cable, and the Dead Cat windscreen is also included. And the microphone is powered from the camera through the 3.5 millimeter audio cable, so that means there are no battery to deal with. And there are no external controls of any kind, it is just a microphone. But it's a really good microphone. I was able to borrow this one from my lovely girlfriend, Heather, so if you wanna hear this microphone in action in more videos, definitely be sure to check out her channel. And I'm sure this is starting to sound a lot like a sponsored video, but I promise you that it's not. I just personally really like Rode microphones. I also, if you've seen, I really love the Rodecaster Pro audio recorder, and I've recently started using the Rode PodMic for audio on podcasts and voiceovers and stuff like that. So I'm just a big fan of what Rode makes, but where that all started was about five years ago. I was borrowing a Rode VideoMic Pro from my high school digital media program that I teach, and I was filming a high school football game. It was super loud and chaotic. People were screaming in the stands. The band was playing. There was a DJ hyping up the crowd. There was just noise everywhere. But the moment that sold me on the VideoMic Pro was when I was in the middle of all that, and I was about 15 feet away from one of the coaches, and the mic picked up his voice perfectly clearly in the middle of all that chaos. And that was about five years ago, and since then, microphones have only gotten better and better. So regardless of its price, I think that the Video Micro is a really great microphone, and side by side with the more expensive Pro Plus, it can actually be kind of hard to tell them apart. So I've been recording this under pretty ideal conditions in a quiet room with both microphones really close to me, so let's take it a little bit further and test them out. This is what the Video Mic Pro Plus sounds like when it's on top of my Canon EOS are, which is about three, three and a half feet away from me. And this is the video micro on top of the Canon EOS R about three and a half feet away. So there's definitely a difference in audio quality, but I think that both microphones still do a pretty good job at picking up audio from a distance. And both microphones actually sound really good close up too. So especially if you're using the dead cat filter, they work really well for voiceovers or even something like a podcast. And the windscreens really do make a huge difference and controlling plosives and breath. So things like Peter Pepper picked a peck of pickled peppers, pipers, that whole thing. And if we take the windscreens off, you can actually see that both microphones are about the same diameter. The Pro Plus is just a little bit longer, but these windscreens make a huge difference in your audio quality. So I think that it's really cool that this one I had to buy for an extra $40 while the Video Micro comes with one that's the same quality. And to be fair, the Video Mic Pro Plus does come with a standard foam windscreen. And these are okay, but if you go outside into like any 
somewhat windy conditions, they just really don't do the job. So if you really want the best audio quality, you need the dead cat windscreen for sure. I'd actually love to take these microphones out into the wind to do a test of these, but it's like a beautiful, calm, wonderful summer day out right now, so there is no wind. But I think that if I just blow on the microphone, you'll be able to tell a difference. So here's the video micro. That's me blowing directly on the microphone with and without the windscreen. Same thing with the Pro Plus. That's what it sounds like with and without the windscreen. But to even take it one step further, here's an actual air blower all around the Pro Plus with the windscreen, and then all around the Pro Plus without the windscreen. Same thing over here with the micro. Here's the rocket blower all around the micro with the windscreen. And here's the rocket blower all around the micro without the windscreen. All in all, I really don't think you can go wrong with the video micro. I'm planning to get one myself because I like it so much. And even though I love the Pro Plus, once it's on your camera, it's actually really big. And so it can turn your camera rig into a very big rig really quickly. And the Video Micro makes everything a lot more compact, which keeps everything really simple and can also help reduce the amount of unwanted attention you get when filming. Because for whatever reason, if people see you with a camera, they're usually fine with it. But as soon as they see a camera with a microphone on top, then you start getting a lot of questions, even if you're doing nothing wrong. And so if you're just out filming casually, sometimes you want to be as discreet as possible. And having a smaller microphone on your camera helps you do that. Now, of course, the Video Micro doesn't offer any extra features like gain boost or high pass filter or low pass filter or anything like that. So if you're doing paid professional work or you really need as much versatility as possible depending on where you're gonna be filming, then I would probably stick with the Video Mic Pro Plus because that gives you all of that extra control. So when comparing the two microphones, as usual, it kind of comes down to your specific needs in terms of which one is best, but honestly, I don't think you can go wrong either way. And just a quick tip, if you are using the Video Micro and it's bouncing around a lot, the little mount that connects to the camera's accessory shoe has all these little ridges in it, and you can just clip the audio cable into one of those and it holds the microphone in place, which reduces some of the wiggle and helps you get better audio quality. So if you didn't know or you couldn't tell, I'm a huge fan of cameras and gear and all that kind of stuff. So I did put together a playlist of some of my favorite reviews that I've done. So be sure to check those out and I will see you in the next video.